Let us pray. Remember your mercies, O Lord, and with your eternal protection sanctify your servants for whom Christ your Son, by the shedding of his blood, established the Paschal Mystery, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And welcome to our Good Friday service. We ask that you try to access the Gospel reading, the Passion account, so that you can join in in the S1 parts with the rest of us. Also, if you have a crucifix handy, we'll venerate the crucifix in your home during the time of veneration of the cross. We now have our first reading. First reading is a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. See, my servant shall prosper. He shall be exalted and lifted up, and shall be very high. Just as there were many who were astonished at him, so marred was his appearance beyond human semblance, and his form beyond that of the sons of man. So he shall startle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which had not been told them, they shall see. And that which they had not heard, they shall contemplate. Who has believed what we have heard? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before the Lord like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity, and as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases, yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole. And by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. Each has turned to their own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring, and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors, Yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness deliver me. Into your hand I commit my spirit, and you have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. I am the scorn of all my adversaries, a horror to my neighbors, an object, object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I have passed out of mind like one who is dead. I have become like a broken vessel. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. 
Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Be strong and let your heart take courage, all you who wait for the Lord. Father, into your hands I command my spirit. Second reading, a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, Son of the God, let us hold fast to our confession, for we do, we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weakness, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he, wa he was here because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. Christ became obedient for us to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him and gave him the name above every name. Praise to you, Lord, King of eternal glory. And if you're able to access the account of the Passion from Matthew, uh, from John here, uh, we'll have Father Jim will play Jesus' role, Christine will be the narrator, and the rest of us will join in with the S part. The Gospel according to John. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. After they had eaten the supper, Jesus went out with his disciples across the Kidron Valley to a place where there was a garden, which he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who, was betra who betrayed him, also knew this place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers, together with the police from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, Whom are you looking for? They answered, Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth. Nazareth. I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, they stepped back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Whom are you looking for? Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth. Nazareth. I told you, I am he. And so if you are looking for me, let these other men go. This was to fulfill the word that he had spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it, struck the high priest's slave, and cut off his right ear. The slave's name was Mal Malchus. Jesus said to Peter, Put your sword back into its sheath. Am I not to drink the cup that the Father has given me? So the soldiers, their officer, and the Jewish police arrested Jesus and bound him. First they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it was better to have one person die for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple followed Jesus. Since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest. But Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple who was known to the high priest went out, spoke to the women who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? And Peter said, I am not. Now the slaves and the police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, 
and they were standing around it and warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. Then the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple where all the Jews come together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Are those who heard what I said to them, they know what I said? When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus in the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong. But if I have spoken rightly, why do you strike me? Then an ass sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Now Simon Peter was standing and warming himself. They asked him, You are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? Again Peter denied it, and at that moment the cock crowed. And we're going to do the Kyrie Eleison, the Lord of Mercy, in Crete. Manitou kitima kinawina. Manitou kitima kinawina. Then they took Jesus from Caiaphas to Pilate's headquarters. It was early in the morning. They themselves did not enter the headquarters so as to avoid ritual defilement and to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate went out to them and said, What accusation do you bring against this man? They answered, If this man were not a criminal, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and judge him according to your law. And they replied, we are not permitted to put anyone to death. This was to fulfill what Jesus had said when he indicated the kind of death he was to die. Then Pilate asked, entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? My kingdom is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. So you are a king. You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. What is truth? After he had said this, Pilate went out to the Jews again and told them, I find no case against him, but you have a custom that I release someone for you at the Passover. Do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? They shouted in reply, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a bandit. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged, and the soldiers wore a, wove a crown of thorns and put it on his head, and they dressed him in a purple robe. They kept coming up to him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck him on the face. Pilate went out again and said to them, Look, look I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no case against him. So Jesus came out, wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe. Pilate said to them, Here is the man. When the chief priests and the police saw him, they shouted, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. I find no case against him. They answered him, We have a law, and according to that law, he ought to die, because he has claimed to be the Son of God. Now, when Pilate heard this, he was more afraid than ever. He entered his headquarters again and asked Jesus, Where are you from? 
But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate therefore said to him, Do you refuse to speak to me? Do you not know that I have power to release you and power to crucify you? You would have no power over me unless it has been given you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to release him, but the Jews cried out, If you release this man, you are no friend of the emperor. Everyone who claims to be a king sets himself against the emperor. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus outside and sat on the judge's bench at a place called the Stone Pavement, or in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the day of preparation for the Passover, and it was about noon. Pilate said to the Jews, Here is your king. They cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate asked them, Shall I crucify your king? And the chief priests answered, we have no king but the emperor. So they took Jesus, and carrying the cross by himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, which in Hebrew is called Golgotha. There they crucified him, and with, and with him two others, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate also had an inscription written and put on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the people read this inscription because the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and it was written in Hebrew, in Latin, and in Greek. Then the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write king of the Jews, but this man said, I am king of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his clothes and divided them into four parts, one for each soldier. They also took his tunic. Now the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from the top. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it, to see who will get it. This was to fulfill what the scripture says. They divided my clothes amongst themselves, and for my clothing they cast lots. And that is what the soldiers did. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, in order to fulfill the scripture, he said, I am thirsty. A jar full of sour wine was standing there, so they put a sponge full of the wine on a branch of hyssop and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Since it was the day of preparation, the Jews did not want the bodies left on the cross during the Sabbath, especially because that Sabbath was a day of great solemnity. So 
So they asked Pilate to have the legs of the crucified man broken and the bodies removed. Then the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first and of the other who had been crucified with him. But when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw this has testified so that you also may believe his testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. These things occurred so that the scripture might be fulfilled. None of his bones shall be broken. And again, another passage of scripture says, they will look on the one whom they have pierced. After these things, Joseph of Arimathea, who was a disciple of Jesus, thought a secret one because of his fear of the Jews, asked Pilate to let him take away the body of Jesus. Pilate came, gave his permission, so he came and removed the body. Nicodemus, who had at first come to Jesus by night, also came, bringing a mixture of myrrh and aloes, weighing about a hundred weight. They took the body of Jesus and wrapped it with the spices in linen cloths, according to the burial custom of the Jews. Now there was a garden in the place where he was crucified, and in the garden there was a new tomb, in which no one had ever been laid. And so, because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. In this time of quarantine and self-isolation, we're, we're a bit like the Inuit way up north in the longest nights. And the way they got through it was by telling stories. So I think we need a lot of good stories these days. So I want to share with you one of the stories Megan McKenna shared with us a couple months ago. And it's from the indigenous group around the uh, Wisconsin, Minnesota area. So once upon a time. A long, long time ago when there was no two-leggeds here. It was only the animals. An eagle was very young and a little bit full of himself. And as the spring was coming, he decided to challenge Bear to a race. And he told Bear, if you win, I'll be your slave. But if I win, you are a slave to me. And Bear was a little bit groggy coming out of hibernation, so he agreed to the race. And sure enough, Eagle won, and Bear became slave to him. So then the Eagle went on in his confidence to challenge the falcon and the cheetah, the uh, uh, hawk and uh, the leopard, and he beat everyone. And pretty soon, all the animals were slave to Eagle, except for turtle and muskrat. So these two were friends. And one morning, as they were visiting, a uh, uh, turtle said to Muskrat, Muskrat, I had a special dream last night. In my dream, the Creator came to me. And Muskrat said, that's good, that's good. And he says, and in my dream, the Creator said that I would help free all the other animals. And Muskrat said, oh, that's really good. And he said, and then in my dream, the Creator told me to challenge Eagle to a race. And his friend Muskrat said, that doesn't sound very good to me. But again, because that dream was from the creator, Slow Turtle went up to Eagle and said, Eagle, I'm challenging you to a race. And if you win, then Muskrat and I will be your slaves and all will be your slaves. But if I win, then everyone is free. So Eagle accepted to race with Turtle, thinking there was no problem. And then Turtle said, these will be the rules. You're going to pick me up in your talons and fly high, high, high up in the air. And when I say the race is on, you're going to let me go and we'll all both drop to the ground and whoever touches the earth first is the winner. So the eagle agreed to this race, and sure enough, he picked him up, a uh, turtle in his talons, and all the animals were watching and cheering on turtle because he was their hope of freedom. And eagle flew higher and higher and higher with turtle in his talons, and all of a sudden, turtle said, the race is on, and he dropped turtle, and like a rock, turtle started flying down to the earth. 
And so the eagle tucked and dove, and in his dive, he was chasing after Turtle. And it was a very close race, but because of the dive, the eagle got ahead of Turtle hurtling to the ground. But Eagle was going faster than he'd ever gone, hurtling to the ground, and just before he hit, he swooped up a little too early in his fear and didn't touch the earth. And just a half second later, pow, Turtle smashed into the ground with a big cloud of dust. And all the animals cheered because now they were free. But Muskrat looked at this shell lying on the dust and his heart was breaking. But after a few minutes, a little arm wiggled out of the shell and kind of stretched. And then another arm came out. And then slowly a leg and the other leg. And finally Turtle's head peeked out. And he kind of shook himself and went, oh, that was a terrible hit. And so then Muskrat came up and said, are you okay, are you okay? And Turtle says, please flip me back over the right way. And so Muskrat flipped him over and he said, Turtle, you freed all the people. Did the creator tell you that this was the way to do it? And he says, yes, the creator told me to do that. And did the creator tell you that you were going to live from the crash? And Turtle said, no, I didn't think I would. I like that story because it speaks of the self-sacrifice that Turtle was willing to do on behalf of the others. And Jesus' passion and Good Friday is all about self-sacrifice. He told us so often, Jesus, that those who, who choose to keep their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake will keep it. Those are powerful words. And Jesus didn't just use words today, but he demonstrated the giving of his life for us. And so I just invite you to pray today, how may you be keeping your life, trying to save it and letting some of our selfishness or fears keep us from giving our life away? And I invite you to think about how you do give your life away. How you do surrender yourself, your time and your day to God's will and his cares. By the way that you care for the others around you. The way you pray for others. And in this reflection we really remember that Jesus has told us it's about self-sacrifice. About giving ourselves away. May we give our lives to God's will this day. Jesus has always told us that when two or three are gathered in his name, that he will be in our midst. And so when we pray our prayers of the faithful each Sunday, those are powerful prayers that God truly hears. In Good Friday, we have 10, and this year one extra, uh, and special prayers of the faithful that we've been praying for close to 1,600 years. So these are important prayers that we are offering. Let us pray, dearly beloved, for the Holy Church of God, that our God and Lord be pleased to give her peace, to guard her and to unite her throughout the whole world, and grant that, leading our life in tranquility and quiet, we may glorify God, the Father Almighty. Niotsina Manito, who in Christ revealed your glory to all the nations, watch over the works of your mercy that your church spread throughout the world, may persevere steadfast in faith in confessing your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray also 
for our most holy father, Pope Francis. Let God and Lord of who chose him for the order of bishops may keep him safe unharmed for the Lord's holy church to govern the holy people of God. Almighty ever living God, by whose decree all things are founded, look with favor on our prayers and in your kindness protect the Pope chosen for us, that under him the Christian people, governed by you their maker, may grow in merit by reason of their faith. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray also for our bishop, for all bishops, priests, and deacons of the church, and for the whole of the faithful people. Almighty ever-living God, Kitsamanato, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is sanctified and governed, hear our humble prayer for your ministers, that by the gift of your grace, all may serve you faithfully through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for catechumens that our God and Lord may open wide doors of their inmost hearts and unlock the gates of his mercy, that having received forgiveness of all their sins through the waters of rebirth, they too may be one with Christ Jesus our Lord. Niotsina, Almighty God, who make your church ever faith fruitful with new offspring, increase the faith and understanding of our catechumens that reborn in the font of baptism, they may be added to the number of your adopted children. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray also for all of our brothers and sisters who believe in Christ, that our God and Lord may be, may be pleased as they live the truth, to gather them together and keep them in his one church. Almighty ever-living God, Kitsumanato, who gather what is scattered, and keep together what you have gathered. Look kindly on the flock of your Son, that those whom one baptism has consecrated may be joined together by integrity of faith and united in the bond of charity. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for the Jewish people to whom the Lord our God spoke first that he may grant them to advance in love of his name and in faithfulness to his covenant. Almighty ever-living God, Sayyidariye, who bestowed your promises on Abraham and his descendants, graciously hear the prayers of your church, that the people you first made your own may attain the fullness of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not, do not believe in Christ, that, enlightened by the Holy Spirit, they too may enter on the way of salvation. Almighty ever-living God, Kitsumanato, Grant to those who do not confess Christ that by walking before you with a sincere heart they may find the truth and that we ourselves, being constant in mutual love and striving to understand more fully the mystery of your life, may be made more perfect witnesses to your love in the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray also for those who do not acknowledge God, that, following what is right in sincerity of heart, they may find the way to God himself. Almighty, ever-living God, 
who created all people to seek you always in desiring you and by finding you come to rest. Grant, we pray, that despite every harmful obstacle, all may recognize the signs of your fatherly love and the witness of the good works done by those who believe in you, and so in gladness confess you the one true God and Father of our human race, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray also for those in public office, that our God and Lord may direct their minds and hearts according to his will for the true peace and freedom of all. Almighty ever-living God, Niotsuna, in whose hand lies every human heart and the rights of peoples, look with favor, we pray, on those who govern with authority over us, that throughout the whole world the prosperity of peoples, the assurance of peace, and freedom of religion may through your gift be made secure. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We now have the special intention from Pope Francis for today. For the inflicted in time of pandemic, let us pray also for those who suffer the consequences of the current pandemic, that God the Father may grant health to the sick, strength to those who care for them, comfort to families, and salvation to all the victims who have died. Almighty, ever-living God, only support of our human weakness, look with compassion upon the sorrowful condition of your children who suffer because of this pandemic. Relieve the pain of the sick, give strength to those who care for them, welcome into your peace those who have died, and throughout the time of tribulation, grant that we may all find comfort in your merciful love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray, dearly beloved, to God the Father Almighty, that he may cleanse the world of all errors, banish disease, drive out anger, unlock prisons, loosen feathers, grant to travelers safety, who pilgrims return, health to the sick, and salvation to the dying. Almighty ever-living God, Kitsamanato, comfort of mourners, strength of all who toil, may the prayers of those who cry out in any tribulation come before you that all may rejoice because in their hour of need, your mercy was at hand. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we now have the veneration of the cross. Behold the wood of the cross on which is hung the Savior of the world. Come, let us worship.
We now invite you to go to the crucifix in your own home, to take a moment to venerate the cross there, and to just reflect on Jesus' self-sacrifice for all of us. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring us to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy, be for us protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And we now invite you to make a spiritual communion in your homes. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, Kitsamanato Nielsene, who have restored us to life by the blessed death and resurrection of your Christ, preserve in us the work of your mercy, that partaking in this mystery, we may have a life unceasingly devoted to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we're grateful for your sharing in this Good Friday uh, service. Just a reminder that uh, for Holy Saturday, our video will be available by 6 p.m., Holy Saturday evening. Many of us are putting a candle in our windows, Holy Saturday night, as that symbol of Christ bringing his light into our darkness. 
On Easter Sunday, Easter early morning, uh, our video will be available for Easter Sunday Mass. And the churches and uh, in our homes, some will ring our bells at noon Easter Sunday. Just a way of celebrating uh, Jesus' rising among us. God's blessing on the rest of your Good Friday and Holy Tritium. May abundant blessing, O Lord, we pray, descend upon your people who have honored the death of your Son in the hope of their resurrection. May pardon come, comfort be given, holy faith increase, and everlasting redemption be made secure. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.